15 tips to instantly improve your Milky Way photography. Hello, Photopiller Rafael the Bar here. In this video, I'm gonna give you 15 tips, 15 learning pills you can take to literally and instantly up your Milky Way photography game. But these are just my 15 tips. The list could be much longer. So, if you have any tip you want to share with the community, comment below. Ah, and get ready to see lots and lots of amazing photos from the Photopiller's tribe. And here we go. Let's get rolling. Subscribe and let's get into it. Tip number one, less is more. Simply remove the noise, take away the chaos. The less elements you include in the frame, the better. Eliminate distractions. Direct the viewer's attention to a powerful subject and the Milky Way. Your job is to do the work and use, for example, NASA's Blue Marvel map to find a dark sky location. By the way, here in the Photopills team, we're working in a very cool project that will include a very nice light pollution map, among many other things. Wait and see. Well, when you find a dark sky location, get out there, scout, and find grey subjects. And then apply tip number two. Tip number two, plan. Planning saves so much time and provides so much fun. Because being at the right place at the right time to capture the photo you want to capture is just priceless. So when you find a cool subject, make the most of it. Use the photo pills planner to plan all the possible Milky Way photos you can imagine. With practice, it will take just a few minutes to plan your Milky Way photos. Plan, for example, to get the Milky Way low in the sky for the beautiful panorama. Also, plan to get the galaxy in a stunning diagonal across the scene. By the way, have you noticed this bright area in the Milky Way arch? In the Milky Way, that's the galactic center, that's the center of our galaxy. When planning your Milky Way photos, make sure that you include the galactic center in the frame. It's the most stunning and powerful part of the Milky Way. Also, you can plan to have the Milky Way completely vertical, for example, aligned with your subject. And when you're in the field, use the Night AR button here in the planner, or go back to the Pills menu, and use the night yard button to visualize the position of the Milky Way at all time so you know where the Milky Way is going to be compared to your subject so you know the exact time the Milky Way is going to be right where you want it to be and you can choose your shooting spot easily how cool is that? and when you're scouting, when you're planning take into account tip number 3 by the way, if you want to learn how to plan the Milky Way watch this video and if you wish to learn how to photograph the Milky Way from a start to finish, from idea to photo, watch this one. Tip number three, composition. Use some of the fundamental elements of composition. The point, the lines, symmetry, balance, texture, scale, patterns. This image by Jaime Hill Romero is a great example of the use of a great use of the composition elements. First, the path catches our attention and gently guides us into the picture, where we find this tiny human figure almost as a point and working great with the majestic Milky Way in the sky to give us a sense of scale. The image is telling us, humans, you're so tiny and so insignificant compared with the immensity of the galaxy. You could also use distance to show how distant are the elements by separating them in the frame, like this photo by James Ober. Or use texture and shapes, like in this photo, for example, by R.J. McBain that was taken in White Pocket, uh, Arizona, USA. And the list goes on. There are so many examples I could show you that I could do a whole video only on Milky Way composition tips. Hmm, wait a minute. That would be cool. Yes, that would be very cool. You know what? I'll do it. I'll make the video. You have my word. If you don't want to miss it, subscribe. Tip number four, framing. How do you frame at night? You don't see anything. And I don't recommend you to use your torch to lead the photograph because your eyes will need between 20 and 30 minutes to adapt again to darkness. And even worse, you could ruin others' photographers' shots. And I suppose that you don't want to have to escape, to run away in the middle of the night, leaving all your gear behind, chased by a furious crowd of photographers, armed with tripods, stones, and who knows what else, right? So how do you do it? How how do you frame at night? And how do you do it fast? Easy, just push the ISO up to 6400, 12500, 25600. So you can set a super fast shooter speed of a few seconds because you don't want to waste 20 or 30 seconds every time you need to adjust your framing. Then take a test shot, check the framing, and if you don't like it, just adjust the frame and iterate, repeat the process. Iterate until you get the framing you want. Well, we have the subject, the plan, the composition, and the framing. Now let's talk about focusing. 
Tip number five, maximize the apple fill. If you wish to maximize the apple fill, this is to get in focus acceptably sharp from the foreground, your subject to the stars, the Milky Way, then use the hyperfocal distance. In the photo team, we use hyperfocal distance all the time and it works great for us. But if you're using another focusing system, please let me know in the comments. Where was I? Ah, don't panic. The hyperfocal distance is just a distance you need to calculate. It will bite you. It depends on the sense of your camera, the aperture and the focal length. You can easily calculate it using the hyperfocal table of photo pills. For example, for the Nikon Z6, if I'm shooting with a focal length of 14 mm and an aperture of 2.8, the hyperfocal distance is 2.33 meters. And when you're in the field, you can use the AR button to visualize the hyperfocal distance in the field on the terrain, in this case 2.8. 33 meters over there. Now, the trick here is to make focus at something that falls behind the hyperfocal distance. In this case, for example, this chair over there. If your subject falls behind the hyperfocal distance, just make focus on your subject. This way, you'll get your subject super sharp and the stars acceptably sharp. The rule says that if you focus at the hyperfocal distance, you'll get in focus acceptably sharp from half of this distance to infinity. But be aware, because if you do so, if you focus at something that falls shorter than the hyperfocal, you'll get the stars out of focus. Don't believe me? Well, watch this video and you'll understand it. Tip number six, foreground light painting. Unless you photograph in a lighthouse or the moon is above the horizon, if you wish to photograph the Milky Way in one single exposure, you'll need to light paint the foreground to capture detail in both the Milky Way and the foreground. Otherwise, the foreground will appear too dark with no detail and you don't want that. So, how do you do it? Well, please don't do what I see people doing all the time, which is taking a torch and adding light from right behind the camera. If you do that, if you add frontal light to your subject, what you'll get is a super flat image. Instead, if you're shooting with a group of friends, just ask a friend to go to the side and uh, leave the foreground from the side. And this way you'll be able to capture volume and texture in the foreground in your subject, making the image much more interesting. Another option is do it yourself. Do the line painting yourself by using a wireless shutter release. On Amazon, you'll find super cheap uh, wireless shutter releases for a bit more than 20 bucks. And then other more expensive and more powerful ones, like the Cam Ranger Mini for around 200 bucks. Antonio Cladera, the photographer of the Photopills team, uses the Cam Ranger 2 to control the camera from the phone. And I have to say it, he's addicted to it. The only downside is that it costs around $350 and $400 according to the official website. Okay, when it comes to the gear we use and how we use it, we like to use two LED panels at 5% capacity placed super far away from our subject, say 30, 40 meters. This lighting technique is called low level lighting because once everything is set up, it's so much convenient without having to worry about light painting the foreground from scratch in every single exposure. But above all, the resulting images have a much more natural look, as if the scene was naturally lit by a natural source, like the moon, for example. Well, this is how we light paint the foreground. But what about you? How do you do it? What other techniques do you use? Let me know in the comments. Tip number seven think different. Break the rules, challenge the status quo, don't take the same photo everyone else is taking. Look up, sometimes the photo is not where you expect it to be. Take advantage of trees, use them as guide on line, a frame in the Milky Way. Close up, pick a tiny object and make it the start of the photo. Make it huge, fill the frame with it, the effect is stunning. Go long. Everyone is using wide angle lenses to photograph the Milky Way. Do the opposite, go far away from your subject and use a telephoto lens to photograph it with a huge Milky Way core. Capture detail in the core, in the center. Use bokeh, shoot a portrait with a wide aperture and use the bokeh of the stars to create a super interesting background. The stars are not white, they have color. Capture the color, make the photo more interesting. Feel the foreground, get closer to a nice stone, a nice plant, and feel the foreground with it. Begin a dialogue with the foreground and with the secondary subject that you have at the background and the Milky Way. 
climb up, climb a mountain and photograph the Milky Way above the clouds. How cool is that? The sky is the limit, the possibilities are endless. So next time you approach a scene, think, what could you do different? What could you do to create something new? Tip number 8. Avoid star trails. I mean, don't get me wrong, star trails are super super cool. We love capturing the color of the trails in our star trails photos. We love star trails so much that we've actually written a super detailed and long star trail photography guide. You'll find the link in the description of this video. Check it out. But when photographing the Milky Way, we don't want the stars to appear as trails in the photo. We want pinpoint stars no trails. And as you know, when you're shooting a long exposure due to the rotation of the Earth, after a certain exposure time, the stars begin to appear as trails in the photo. So to get the stars as pinpoint stars, you need to limit your exposure time. So what's the exposure time you should use? Well, if you go to photo pills in the pills menu and scroll down and tap on spot the stars, you'll find the answer here. Set your camera, the focal length, the aperture, the declination and the position and here you'll get two results. The MPF rule, 18 seconds in this example and the 500 rule, 36 seconds. Take these values as a range of shooter speeds. Begin using the MPF rule shooter speed, 18 seconds. Take a test shot and see if the star appears as a trail or as a pinpoint the star. If it appears as a dot, you can even increase the shutter speed a bit to allow more light to get into the system, to catch more stars. Let's say, for example, you increase it by two seconds to 20 seconds. Then you can take another test shot and see if you like the result, if the stars are remaining as dots. If not, then use a shorter shutter speed. Just practice, just test different shutter speeds and decide what works for you. And of course, if you use the 500 rule shutter speed, probably you'll get trails in your photos. Tip number nine, mix it. Having the Milky Way in the sky is great, but imagine what would happen if you have the Milky Way and you mix it with another cool astronomical event. Like for example, a meteor shower. Wouldn't it be amazing? Of course it would be. So do it. Let me give you two examples. For example, you can mix it with a meteor shower. If you plan your Milky Way shot for the night a powerful meteor shower is peaking, a meteor shower like the Geminids or the Perseids, and you spend the whole night taking photos of the show, then you'll end the night with so many cool photos of the Milky Way and probably some meteors like this one. And once at home, you'll be able to create images like this one in post-processing where you see all the meteors converging in one spot in the sky, the radiant point. And here you have another example. And another one. If you wish to learn how to plan your photos of a meteor shower, watch this video. Example number two, mixing with an aurora. The truth is, this is a legendary photo. I mean, mixing a Milky Way arch with an arch made of an aurora, just incredible. It seems almost impossible to me. So congratulations, Giulio. What an amazing photo. As I am representing the Photo team here, I accept the challenge in the name of the team. I mean, photographing the Milky Way with an, with an Aurora. Mm, so exciting. Tip number 10, ETTR exposed to the right. When photographing the Milky Way under heavy light pollution, pushing the exposure up, pushing the histogram to the right towards the whites can be beneficial for the final image. Because in post, you'll be able to recover lots of detail in the shadows. In this field, the expert is my friend and Photopills master, Ian Norman from Lonely Spec. So I recommend you to watch this video where Ian explains step by step how to photograph the Milky Way under heavy light pollution. And he demonstrates the editing workflow too. So watch it. Come on guys, five tips to go. Tip number 11, harmony. What do I mean with harmony? I mean that when you're looking at your Milky Way photo, you need to feel that the Milky Way, the foreground, your subject are embracing each other, that they live in harmony. This image taken by Antoni Cladera, the photographer of the Fropils team, in the early days of Milky Way photography, it's the opposite example of harmony in the Milky Way photo. The sky is far too bright, explosive, the foreground is poorly lit, the composition, well, what can I say? 
there is no harmony in the image there is a clear separation between the sky and the foreground compared with this one he took a few years later the composition is great the human figure gives a scale and the natural arch and the milky way are talking the same visual language here using the low level lighting technique is key to get this natural look of the natural arch and also the right white balance delivers these natural tones of the galactic center these brown tones to get these natural colors of the Milky Way start using a white balance of 3900 Kelvin when there is no light pollution. When there is light pollution, then start with a white balance of 3400 Kelvin. But when you're in the field, you don't really need to worry too much about the wire balance because you can always adjust it in post-processing. Also, and this is very important, when you're editing the Milky Way, you have Antares, the red star in the frame, in the picture, then editing the Milky Way in a way Antares is a kind of reddish. If you do it, then the Milky Way will have a supernatural look. The question is, how do you locate Antares? On this image, Antares is located on the right hand side and you see the horn of the Milky Way of the galactic center pointing at the star. You see it, it's a bit reddish. By the way, if you want to learn how to edit the Milky Way, watch this masterclass by Nick Page, the great Nick Page. And if the link doesn't appear here, I'm going to leave the link also in the description of this video, just in case. Okay, okay, okay. Next tip results in amazing photos. So let's go. But first, subscribe. Tip number 12, Panos. Capture it all. Capture the whole arch of the Milky Way. If you take all the tips I already shown you and you apply them in a Milky Way panel, the results are going to be stunning. Let me give you a few examples. Enjoy! By the way, I almost forgot to mention it. When you shoot in a panel, make sure that you overlap your photos with more than 30%. It's gonna be easier to put the panel together afterwards in post. Tip number 12 plus one. Tip number 13, reflexes. It is said that where there is water, there is life. Well, I say that where there is water, there are stars. Lots of stars. Well, technically you could also use a large mirror. So go and find a lake, find a pool, find a surface capable of reflecting the stars, plan a cool photo and enjoy the show. Ah, and pray there's no wind that day. Plan and pray. If you're interested, you'll find the link in the description of this video to our t-shirt shop. Plan and pray. Tip number 14. No vibrations. This one is easy. The more stable your camera is, the less you touch your camera, the sharper your Milky Way photos will be. Remember that you're shooting a long exposure, so avoid any vibration at all costs. Vibrations produce blurry images. So get a sturdy tripod and press it against the ground to make sure it is stable. And use a shutter release or an intervalometer so you don't have to touch the camera. And when it's windy, don't hang a weight from the tripod. It will make the system unstable and it will introduce vibrations. Vibrations. Avoiding vibrations is key, so avoid them at all costs. Well, and finally we get to our last tip. But don't worry, I have more tips to share. I'm already planning on making another video on Milky Way photography tips, and in this case I'm gonna share super advanced tips for pro results. Okay, the last tip, tip number 15, and in my opinion is the most important one. Just do it, just do it, just do it, and just do it. Take action! With all the tips and videos I've shared in this video, you have everything you need to radically improve your Milky Way photography. Now it's when the fun begins. It's time to put everything you learned into practice. So find a powerful subject in a dark sky location, plan a cool photo and go and capture it. But above all, enjoy the ride. With practice, you'll see how your photos improve. The next video is gonna be about photographing a rare astronomical event that happens only twice a year and that probably you don't know about its existence. So give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you wish to learn more about Milky Way photography, and also leave a link in the description of this video to our super detailed Milky Way photography guide, check it out. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot. 
Legendary Foros. Bye.